Hey everybody, welcome to our third episode of Talking Toys with Brock Lauer and Kyle Walters. And we have a lot to talk about today. Um, a lot, just in a month from our last episode, a lot of stuff has come out. So we're just going to dive right into all the updates that are coming out. Such as, right now, the GameStop exclusive Marvel Legends Spider-Man is set to release pretty soon. There's, I don't know what the release date is. Do you know what the release date is for that? No, not off the top of my head, but it's based off of the new PlayStation 4 game. What do you think of that game and that figure? I know you and I are both incredibly pumped about the game. It reminds me of, I believe it was the Spider-Man 2 game, where you fought multiple villains, and it was just an overall fun experience. A lot more than just uh, some some superhero games where like the focus is one main arch enemy, and you fight just a bunch of just random lackeys and cronies. So it looks really exciting. The figure looks aesthetically beautiful. The only thing I'm not excited about it is from a couple years ago, they had three different Walmart figures. You had a Miles Morales, a really crappy lizard based off of the first uh, movie when they did the reboot after mm-hmm. Tobey Maguire, right. and a uh, a Spider Man, and they they're reusing that web, and it's like, why not just make a new web? Why not just utilize a better web than that? I'm excited for the game. I saw the sample for that game, and it looked crazy. You fight like Rhino, Electro, Vulture. The new villain is Mr. Negative, but the figure looks great. I have to buy it because it's Spider-Man, and I'm definitely going to get that game. And they are, like, really marketing the heck out of this game. And they they have hats and shirts and everything. So they want this game is, I think, going to be great, and it's going to be fun for everybody because I love Spider-Man games. and So I had, I had all the ones from the original movies, like when they made games off those. So I was really happy about how those games turned out. So, and also in Marvel Legends news, while we're on the topic, Marvel Legends 3-pack Thanos, Iron Man, and Doctor Strange. I'm excited for the new Thanos, and I I could use an updated Doctor Strange, but I'm not that crazy about the whole new Iron Man with the lack of accessories. He has a light-up core, and he doesn't have, like, so many, like, accessories he could have like he did from the movie. What do you think about that 3-pack? I thought the Thanos uh, looks really good. Uh, I'm still really big on the SH Figure Arts one, so I'm going to pass on it. But it's like I feel Hasbro realized their mistake with the uh, Raisinette Thanos they gave us as a, as a Build-A-Figure because that figure looked like hot garbage. And I, it feels like they listened to their fan base and was like, hey, maybe we should actually give them something they want. Uh, The Doctor Strange looks really good. It looks like from the outside, kind of reminds me of the import companies, where it looks like you can actually, instead of him holding the, uh, his mystical effects like a shield, it looks like you can actually plug it into a hole in his hand, which is how it should be. Yeah. Like, the whole thing about being an adult collector is, like, we we want it to be as close to the source material as possible, and Doctor Strange does not hold, like, he, he... can shoot the effects and stuff like that, which looks great. And the Iron Man is just kind of like, eh, meh. Like, yeah. why? Like, it would have been a lot more, a lot cooler if they would have given us like uh, Ebony Mao or some or another member of what is that called, the Black Order, I believe. Yeah. Like, because Proxima Midnight looks great, and they're giving us what's his name, the um, Builder figure, Call Obsidian. And they're giving us Call Obsidian, and it's like, so we still need the other two, and it's like, you could have given us that instead. I wanted the three-pack to be Thanos, Iron Man with better accessories, and Spider-Man with the Iron Spider arms, but they didn't give us that. Now, I'm hoping they're going to showcase that on SDCC this year to get the new Spider-Man, and I, I think that's it with Iron Man. I don't think you're going to get a better Iron Man than the one you got, but I was like, ah, I don't really need a Doctor Strange, but it's like, all right, but I was really hoping for that Iron Man to come with more accessories, Spider-Man to come with those golden arms. And the, but the Thanos looks great. They really did a better tone, a skin tone with him. And they also did like more designs on his armor, which I was happy about. But yeah, but that's what you get. And really, you have more to say about it? Yeah, I feel like um, I feel like uh, Iron Spider. They will eventually do something because one of the great things uh, as a business major in college, uh, the one of the general core principles is business is. Uh, competition breeds improvement yeah if you look at when they uh when they first announced that without any arms people were like eh, it looks okay and then sh figure arts from bandai to machinations came out with one and people were like oh it's a pretty cool figure and then now mafex is set to come out with one right so i feel like yeah most people are going to shift towards the import companies yeah so if they were smart like they did the uh the build the the build the wings for the vulture 
do like a build a build an arms or something like that. It, like if they do something to kind of get that market back, they could bring a lot of people back because they have such a nice twenty dollar price point. Right, and also in Marvel Legends news, uh, we're apparently with the Ross and Killmonger two pack, we're getting a build a figure Stan Lee. Now, I don't, did you hear about that? I did hear about that. There's rumors though that it's canceled. But really? I'm hoping the rumors are false because the figure aesthetically looks great. Yeah. And because it's supposed to be like two different two packs, I think, through Target. Yeah. And I really hope they don't cancel it because uh, the only thing I could see is canceling uh, that would be that would make them want to cancel it is uh, because it's not a, a, a comic character, it's an actual person. All right. I could see it maybe if Stanley didn't want his likeness used, but. At the same time, Stanley already had, I, I want to say it was through Hasbro, he had an SDCC exclusive figure of himself from a couple, from a handful of years right. back. So I don't think that would be it, but, and plus Target uh, has always had exclusives through Hasbro and many other companies, so I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that it comes through, because I'd love more, uh, more creators, maybe they'll give us a James Gunn in the future, or right. some, or a... Uh, Something like that. Yeah, and apparently you'll get the legs with the Killmonger and Ross two-pack, and then the head and torso and arms with the um, Falcon and Winter Soldier two-pack. So it's kind of like a two-part builder figure. But I'm excited for it. Yeah, they have to They have to make a Stan Lee. I, mean, I put him front and center in my collection of Marvel Legends. Now, also with SDC coming up, the five-pack of the Defenders came out, such which comes with Daredevil, Colleen, Iron Fist, Luke Cage, and Jessica Jones, which I'm not really quite that excited for. I think they're going to make Iron Fist and Colleen into a two-pack and maybe release them later, because that's kind of like how half these exclusives kind of are. If you need a certain figure, or they just kind of redo the figure, like one or two in a pack. Yeah, I think I'll wait, and I'm, I'm going to pass on that the Defenders pack. What about you? Same. I just think it was just, I think, I, I understand that plastic molds can cost money, or, or a lot of money. Yeah. I remember uh, Lego said sometimes, uh, when I watched a documentary of them, they said sometimes it can cost upwards of $20,000. So I understand reusing body parts for figures, which is fine, because there's some, a lot of body molds I think Hasbro does that people don't appreciate enough. Yeah. Like the Bucky Cap mold. They use that a lot, but it's a good mold. But at the same time, when I looked at some of that, I was like, oh, they give us the exact same Daredevil, and they just give him an unmasked head. I was like, eh. The mm -hmm. Iron Fist looks cool. I still haven't seen all the Netflix shows. Yes, I know it's a cardinal sin. Yeah. I'll, I'll eventually catch up. But yeah, They're uh, good. They're good. The Iron Fist is the only one where I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Um, Because okay. I, I liked how they... Cause as you know from the Doctor Strange wave, when that movie released, I have the Iron Fist figure. That's a great figure, and he's a fun character the more I learn about him. Yeah. But I'm just I'm just not excited about that. I'm hoping they do some other things, and it would be, it, especially compared to last year, because that Thor box set last year, uh, I bought the Malachite, and then they released it uh, yeah. through, through the normal Legends, which I thought was kind of, kind of funny, and I was like, eh, maybe I'll still buy it again, because I'll have two different color versions. But anyways, I thought that figure set was great. I don't care about Jane Foster's Thor. Still a cool figure, though. But then this set is just, compared to a lot of other sets Hasbro's released in years past, mm -hmm. seems very, very underwhelming. And speaking with, of Defenders, we're getting a Luke Cage in his yellow shirt and a Claire Temple 2-pack. If you've seen the show, Claire Temple is a character that is uh, seen in throughout all the like Daredevil, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. So she's kind of like a recurring, like the Phil Coulson of the Defenders almost, and she occurs in all the TV shows. Uh, Luke Cage comes with like he has a yellow shirt and he has like a watch on, it looks really well done. And then Claire Temple will have interchangeable hands, surgical gloves, and like those blade claws she'll have. But that looks really like a really I don't know if you saw it, but. It looked like a like a really good Luke Cage Marvel Legend figure. Yeah, I mean, did you catch that one? That that those pictures? Uh, unfortunately, I did not. I didn't see that one at all. But I'm sure it does look really cool. Yeah, I mean, if you get into the show, like I'm gonna watch Luke Cage season two in like a week. It's it's you know you get into the figures, so it's easy. It's it makes it makes you more comfortable getting the figures. But also they've rounded out the build a figure Venom wave. With, you know, obviously going to Venom, Carnage, Scream, and Spider-Pig, Poison, and now Typhoid Mary is the new reveal for that. Okay, are you going to get the Typhoid Mary, or are you going to get, how, like, what figures are, 
We did talk about this wave, but which ones from that wave are you interested in? Spider Ham, because it's so random. I have the Dorbs through Funko from that. Right. And I guess in the comics, when I was doing some research on it, his name is Peter Porker. <laughs> I just thought it was funny. It's the most random thing ever. Yeah. Um, both the Carnage and the Venom look great. And even though I'm not 100% fan of Rebel Tech, I'm still going to get those Rebel Tech figures instead of the Marvel Legends. Typhoid Mary, I don't know enough about her. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm definitely getting Scream. Because the there, I remember there was a comic in the '90s about like the night of the symbiotes. Yeah. So I want Scream, I want Lasher, and then I'll have import figures of Venom and Carnage with both, which both look fantastic. So I like how Hasbro. It seems like they're slowly rounding that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, the build of figure Venom looks great. I guess it's a, it looks like it's movie style Venom. Um, it's I think comic based. I I don't know what artist or comic he's from. It's comic based, and the rumor is you could take the uh, like you come, like the spider pig evil head and put it on that build a figure Venom, and also comes with interchangeable torso. So. Um, oh, and I think the spider pig might come with a Venom spider pig head. Too. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah, okay. it, you could put it on the. You could put it on the, uh, the the build a figure thing. I forget what the character's name is. Or you could even put it on the spider pig if you really want yeah, to. Yeah, or both. Which yeah. Is cool, yeah. I mean, yeah, but the Venom build a figure wave or build a figure comes with two interchangeable torsos. Who is a uh, typhoid Mary? I'm actually unfamiliar with her. I'm not entirely familiar with her either. That's pretty. Um, that's a little more of an obscure character for me. It's not like I read a lot of comics, but I have not come across with her. It's a cool name. Yeah, it's a cool name. I, I, it has a story, and maybe in due part with the sickness, but I'm, I'm not familiar with the character of the comic books I have read. You know, that I, I'm excited. I'm going to get Carnage, Scream, and I do want to build up... <laughs> I do want to build the Build-A-Figure Venom. But those are the figures I'm looking to. Carnage with the extra, with the uh, the normal... Uh, what's his name? Clayton... Oh, I can't think of his name. Uh, oh, the... The, uh, the human head. Yeah, I, the human head. Uh, uh, Cletus Cassidy? Yeah, is that yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Cletus Cassidy, yeah. Yeah. Because Carnage, I've always liked Carnage ever since I've been a kid because he's the more... Like, he's a pure symbiote, whereas I, I guess Venom technically is not a pure symbiote. It's something to that effect. Yeah. So I'm really, really excited about uh, and uh, more, that, more symbiotes. That, like, Marvel Legends, also that Deadpool Wave 2... Did you want to uh, tell us what's who's in that wave? The Deadpool wave contains Bishop, Lady Deadpool, Deadpool and his boxers, Omega Red, uh, a character called Madcap, uh, and the build a figure is Sauron. The me. the ter pterodactyl like. And I'm just I'm ecstatic about this wave. I uh, I will end up getting Lady Deadpool for sure. Mm -hmm. Pantless Deadpool. I like the Sauron. Um, I don't know too much about madcap i'll probably get bishop he's an interesting character and maybe omega red what about you um i might skip this wave i might really i might i i just i not a huge huge deadpool fan i like the one that i got with he's sitting there having lunch with spider-man with the pizza and he has the chimichanga but like i don't know if i had to pick one i do want maybe i'm considering the bishop because he looks pretty cool and he's a cool character he he was awesome in uh, days of future past too because the thing i love about bishop and cable is they all came in the early 90s and bishop i i used to have the old toy biz one which was a good figure right but uh with as great as toy biz did right. some of these new molds aren't like some on some of the toy biz molds would get a little loose after a while because they're plastic, so I think Hasbro has after they kind of will say got their stuff together so to speak a couple years back they've I think they've been for the most part doing a really really fantastic job. Now I'm not saying that they're not doing a fantastic job, but do you kind of get tired of how they do Hasbro does Marvel Legends and I'm I, I'm kind of like there's a part of me that's kind of ticked off where it's like here buy these figures like. Buy Iron Man in the uh, Thanos build a figure set, or build a, build Thanos, and then it's like a month or two later they release something better, like a better version, let's say, like of Thanos, and like you're like, well, I already built that, or like I'm already halfway through that, or it's like I already got like uh, let's say a Spider Man in this wave, and like they later on make a better Spider Man with the arms. It, doesn't that tick you off as a collector? Because it, it does to me. Not I'm a smart collector. I kind of wait and see and like, okay, I'm just gonna anticipate that they make a better version of 
of that character, like Thanos or Spider-Man or something like that, or maybe Iron Man and stuff. And then they go on and they, like, put it in a two-pack, or, the, you know, they put it in, a, like, a three-pack, and you only want one figure from the two- or three-pack or whatever like that, which is better. You know, does that take you off as a collector? Sometimes. But I understand sometimes things improve with Hasbro, and they listen to collectors, but... And the one thing, on the one hand, I understand why a lot of times they'll jam a Thor, an Iron Man, or a Captain America in, it seems like, every flipping wave. Yeah. Because they know kids or 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 whomever will recognize those as a character compared to some of the more obscure characters. But at the same time, it is super annoying because it's like, I know Iron Man has many different armors, but... How many Iron Mans do we really need of the same armor? <laughs> right. They make a different armor per movie to sell a toy, which I don't buy every Iron Man armor. But, you know, I just, I don't know. I, I don't like the fact, like, here's something better. It's like, well, you know, I'm smart because it's like, oh, well, folks, it's, it's, it's a little, it's, if you hear anything, that's thunder. It's about to, it's about to uh, pour down here. So if you hear any rumbling or noises, just uh, let you know it's about to rain here. It's a thunderstorm just rolling in. To our little uh, uh, city of Cleveland here, but uh, we're still gonna we're still gonna be coming to you um, and delivering toy news. Just, just that's the noise if if you're wondering what it is. Also, Kyle, what it, what, what's coming out with the um, the Ant Man Pop Funkos? The uh, I know there's a there's an Ant Man, mm-hmm. there's a Wasp, and the Chase is the unmasked Ant Man. Those are the three main ones I know of, and I know SDCC this year is releasing a classic Ant-Man, which looks really cool. I'm not excited about, like, any of their SDCC exclusives, though, pretty much, except for that. Right. And the Captain America Red Skull Dorbs 2-pack, but that's a different story. Yeah, and, yeah, this looks like they're throwing with an unmasked and masked version of Ant-Man, and, like you just said, Ghost. Um, and also The Incredibles, since The Incredible movie came out, what kind of um, Pop Funkos are coming out of The Incredible line? The, uh... Incredibles 2 movie I saw with my girlfriend. It was fantastic. Oh, I still have to see it. Highly, highly recommend. They have a hand. They've come out with Jack Jack. They they come out with a handful of them. Uh, one is like his metallic look, which a lot of them are exclusives. And I know they have a monster one in the horizon of him. Mm-hmm. They've come out with Mr. Incredible. Dash. Uh, Violet is coming out. Uh, Underminer. Mm-hmm. Frozone came out. Elastigirl. But the main thing I'm really excited about is, spoiler alert, uh, there's the Elastic Cycle in the movie, and they're coming out with a Pop Funko ride of Elastigirl on the Elastic Cycle, and it looks like you can expand her body. Really? Yeah. Well, looks, that's a big step for Funko. It looks really, really nice. Nice. Okay. Yeah, and also, out of uh, SDCC, we're getting a Bespin Han from Empire Strikes Back, and L337 from Solo. Well, this is not... And this is not an SDCC exclusive, but the SDC exclusive is Bez Pinhan from Empire Strikes Back. And then we're also getting more solo figures, which is L337, Beckett, Chewbacca, and uh, Val, all Star Wars Black Series figures. And also we're getting an Emphy's Nest with a swoop bike, which will cost $60. I, did, you, you seem like you, this is the first time you're hearing about this. Yes. <laughs> you didn't hear about that? Okay. Well, I mean, like, yeah, because between you and me, like, we hear different things at different times. But no, I'm, I'm not kidding you. They're building a six-inch Emphy's Nest. I don't know if the helmet will come off, but it comes with a swoop bike, and it's going to cost $60. You seem really excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Um, A lot of times with uh, Star Wars vehicles, though, I just wait till they go on sale at Walmart. Right. I, I love the land speeder that I got with Luke. That's a great, great figure combo set. Yeah. But I also love even more the fact that I got it for like twenty five bucks instead of the yeah. normal like fifty. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to to that figure as well. And Mattel SDC exclusive multiverse Aquaman, Black Manta, Ocean Master uh, action figure set from the multiverse line, which is going to cost sixty dollars. It recreates Aquaman from the the packaging recreates Aquaman number thirty five. Ocean Master has a cape, mask, and spear, and Black Manta. Is he's gonna have interchangeable, three interchangeable eyepieces, a backpack, and harpoon. That's what's gonna come with uh, the yeah, Black Manta. And then DC uh, Hot Wheels exclusive is gonna release like an Action Comics number one, like Hot Wheel with it's like Superman lifting up, uh, lifting up this car, 
uh, like from Action Comics number one, and it's going to be in like a packaging that kind of looks like a comic book. Uh, what do you think of that one? The Hot Wheels exclusive is amazing. I remember when I first showed you that after I found it on Facebook, I was like, yeah. heck yeah. The Aquaman 2-pack, I think the packaging is going to look really cool, but the 3-pack of the figures itself is disappointing. Right. When, uh, when, when Mattel first showcased their figures at Toy Fair, I thought they had one of the best showings. I loved both how they had Beast Boy and they had the Kid Flash with figure, with uh, interchangeable pieces from the Clayface Build-A-Figure Wave, and the reason I like that so much is because a lot of import companies like SH Figure Arts and Mafex do the same thing, where and, and it's it's a nice way of them sort of kind of persuading you to buy other figures in the line. Yeah. And I like that a lot. I was like, that's a really great idea. Um, I was very happy about that. They had a lot of cool figures that they showcased at the show, and it looked like they even got some ankle pivot, because, you know, Mattel is 10 years behind in, in categories like that. Yeah. And But they didn't do it to every figure. And I understood. But I thought, okay, maybe they're headed in the right direction. And then I see this exclusive, and I'm like, wow. I'm like, the same dumb feet, the same <laughs> lackadaisical body molds, especially from the waist down with their legs. Yeah. Um, where you can't really get it into dynamic poses. So it was very, very disappointed, especially because the paint apps look really nice. Ocean Master... Especially Ocean Master and then Black Mana and Aquaman. All their paint apps look great, vibrant 60s slash 70s style paint apps. Yeah. But the uh, the rest of it is just kind of meh. Not excited about it. Right. Uh, but I definitely uh, I'm worried about scalpers. But the Hot Wheels exclusive I would absolutely 100% love to have in my collection. Now, granted, I wanted the Lego Action Comics number one, but even that's going for like two, three hundred dollars, and it's like that's stupid. Right. So it's a Lego, not a hot toy. Yeah. Not a Mezco. It's like some people just absolutely annoy me when they scalp like that. Uh, now the rain's coming, folks. <laughs> but uh, just don't mind the rain. Uh, it's just rain. Uh, we're fine. <laughs> um, also, going to SH Figure Arts, a lot of reveals came out of SH Figure Arts, such as SH Figure Arts revealed Harry Potter figures, such as Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone figures for Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Uh, Harry comes with an owl and broom, books, and you, interchangeable like cloak on the like at the uh, bottom of his cloak. You could make it look like he's flying, or I think it's more along the like, maybe it's articulated, so it looks like his cloak is in the air. And Ron comes, you know, with broom. And Hermione comes with books, and Harry also comes with the uh, the owl. Uh, did you see those by any chance? I saw those. I'm not the biggest Harry Potter in the, um, fan in the world. I know you are, and I know my girlfriend is as well. But yeah. for me, Harry Potter has always been good. But for the most part, it's just been like, eh. It, I mean, it's been a while, so I'm glad that they're making figures again. Um, I think this is going to be a test run to see how it works. And then if, obviously, if it's a success, they'll create more for the first movie and then obviously more ways for the second and like etc etc because they can make a ton of figures from all eight movies and just different variations of characters because they get older and stuff like that and you know it's like star wars essentially like that's a whole new that's a whole new like frontier of figures they could do but that's what's coming out with sh figure arts also some star wars um figures here wait really quick one other thing for sh figure arts is uh I'm a huge, huge Dragon Ball Z fan. Yeah. And they're Bandai Tomashi Nations, which is the parent company of the SH Figure Arts line. Yeah. They're doing um, a North American tour um, where they're going to have exclusives of Super Saiyan God Vegito, and they're going to have another exclusive Broly. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, none of the none of the places they're going to be at are even remotely, or uh, I guess they're a couple states over. They're going to be at, like, SDCC, New York Comic Con. They're going to be down in Texas. They're going to be at a couple places, but definitely if you see those, I, especially the Broly, I would highly recommend picking it up. Yeah. I, it looks like pretty much the same thing. They just painted the hair differently and maybe had some new face sculpts for the Vegito, but definitely keep an eye on, eye on out for those. Majin Vegeta just recently released. Yeah. And I know from their original Dragon Ball line, they're coming out with a Bulma and a Master Roshi, which I know a lot of people are very, very excited about, including myself. Nice. Okay. That's all for your Dragon Ball Z fans. I don't know much, but Kyle's a Dragon Ball Z expert on the show. But that's just how it always was. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I, I love me some anime, especially yeah. Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> okay. And like I said, back to SH Figure Arts with um, 
they had like a big convention, SH Figures convention, and they had a bunch of Star Wars reveals. And I'm just going to read the names because... Yoda? Yeah, Yoda's one of them. Uh, I think he's from Episode 3. Also, Boba Fett is one of them. A Jawa, Clone Troopers from Episode 3. Palpatine in a chair with his throne. Oh, yeah, I saw that. That one looks really, really nice. Yeah, uh, Jabba the Hutt with the articulated tail. I know you and I both were kind of like, eh, we'll stick with the black yeah, chairs. Yeah, like, stick with the like, black I, chairs. I love import figures, but I have the SCCC one of that with um, Salacious Crumb. Yeah. And I'm just going to stick with that because yeah. I, I don't... It's Jabba's, Jabba's fat. Right. And I don't need an articulated tail. The idea is cool, but it's just kind of... Mm, I, a, shout, a shout out to Hasbro. I thought they actually did a better job. They, they did. Than, than SH Figures. Plus, that you get the like thing he was on. Also, a Jabba, an Ewok, Carbonite Han, which I don't know what you're going to do with that. But it's just a, a place all over. Put, put him next to Boba. <laughs> right. Uh, Last Jedi Luke, R5-D4... Wicket, I guess that's he's also going to be in there. Also, Princess Leia, C-3PO, Dooku, some battle droids from Episode 2 and 3, Queen Amidala from Episode 1, Old Han from The Force Awakens, a patrol trooper, and everyone's favorite, Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> Birthday present. <laughs> I don't like Jar Jar Binks. So, I'm not really excited about Jar Jar Binks is coming back as a figure. In fact, I have a Star Wars collection, folks. And if they ever make a Jar Jar Black Series figure, I'm just not getting them. Christmas present for you. Nah, I don't think so. But other than Star Wars, they're also releasing, you know, um, SH Figure is getting back into Guardians uh, Galaxy, the first movie. Doing more of those. They're going to do Falcon, which is which just revealed. The Falcon looks incredible. And uh, I like the one from Hasbro, but like... Hasbro did not give Falcon guns, and that was frustrating. Yeah, that was... And SH Figurettes is giving it. The only problem is, being that it's an import figure, and that one I think is a Japanese exclusive or something like that. You can still get it in the in the United States, but it's going to cost you. I think that one's uh, on Big Bad Toy Story is, is going for ninety nine ninety nine. It's like, eh. yeah, I might still get it, but like, what a terrible price. Yeah, and then they're also coming out with a Hulk a War Machine, a Mark IV War Machine. Thor with Stormbreaker, Wasp for the movie, Black Panther with an unmasked head, and I think that's it for SH Figure Arts. Yeah, pretty much. But they had like a huge convention, folks, and they have a lot coming out. So just, you know, keep that in mind. If you're uh, on SH Figure Arts, you know, it's going to kind of stretch your wallet. I mean, here's another question I have to ask you. You know, you're seeing a lot of product come out between Marvel Legends and SH Figure Arts, right? Right. And... It, it seems to always come out at once. Like, it's not strung out, like, financially well for you. Or, you know, anybody, for that, whoever collects this stuff. And it always seems to come, like, you get... Marvel Legends, you get three waves all at once. And then you get, like, SH Figure Arts, you're getting all this stuff. You know, probably close to, you know, on release date-wise. That's going to hurt the wallet for most collectors. Do you find that there's a distribution problem in, let's say, Marvel Legends or, you know, Hasbro in general? Or... SH Figure Arts, how do you as a collector view that? I think some stores just, it depends on how they place the product out. Because, like, if you go to GameStop or you go to Walgreens, a lot of times I see their waves right out. Especially GameStop. The only problem is GameStop has it, like, $22.99. Yeah. And it's only $3, but $3 is $3. Yeah. Some, but then with Walmarts, like, some Walmarts have some, some Walmarts don't. I, I've never seen the Thanos exclusive in person. Right. Um, I bought last year from a Walmart. Uh, I think I want to say maybe in Kent or Ravenna, which is which are heading towards Youngstown. Um, so it just all sort of uh, depends. Mm -hmm. on, I think on where you are because I think Hasbro did fix a lot of their distribution issues. I think the main company that still has distribution issues is Mezco, though. Yeah, they're again, they're yeah. You can save money with them because they're oh so behind. But you know, I I just wish like they'd string it out. I personally think it's kind of tough on the wallet from like a Marvel Legends standpoint because I think at least two waves per season is the way to go. Like two waves in the fall, whatever. Two waves in like the spring, two waves in like maybe two or three waves in the summer. Or, you know, like it just seemed like that would be like if they could get like kind of like like a like a, a beat going and just kind of like, well, this is what's coming out. This is coming out. Like it's like a consistency. 
where you don't have to spend too much, but it's like, it's probably like, well, there's at least 10 things in the store, and it seems like the stores can't seem to keep up, but I've noticed, like, not all the stores, I haven't seen a lot of that Spider-Man build-a-figure lizard wave in every store. I've only seen that in GameStop. It seems like, like, you know, like, certain stores can only carry certain lines of figures. I don't know what that's all about, but, like, you'll see, like, you'll expect some waves, and you get, like, two waves, and you'll see that wave, two of those waves, all everywhere else. But, you know, like, there'll be that one wave which isn't as available as some other waves. But that's how I feel towards it. And moving right along, we have a Hot Toys solo coming out. And also a Mud Trooper solo that came out, like the movie. Uh, I actually did. Oh, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I'm not saying it's the greatest thing Star Wars ever, but I thought it was decent. So if you're into, you know, Hot Toys and you want a solo figure, get the Mud Trooper solo and the regular solo. And also Lego has some uh, going to Lego now. Lego uh, released a couple new sets, such as the Imperial AT hauler from the movie where that train scene where they're trying to like steal that uh, the coaxium from the train. Uh, yeah, so that, that yes, yeah, yes. so Lego is building a set off that ship, and they're also and with that with that set they can come with five minifigures such as Kira, Val, two villains, Rio. You could pick it up uh, pretty soon, I imagine. I, it's before the year is out, and also the Imperial Transport, which is the train with the coaxium in it, comes with a couple of uh, minifigs such as Solo, Range Troopers, two Range Troopers, Chewie, and a pilot, and that's what's coming out with Solo. So, like, Lego's really, like, getting into these movies, and they're, they're making bank on um, these Lego sets as well, so... But also in uh, recent news, as I said before in our last show, the Harry Potter Legos are coming out. Um, there's a $15 Aragog set with Harry and Ron, and it comes with Aragog, and it has, like, a tree accessory. It's a really small set. Like, that's the cheap end of LEGO, like a $15 set now. And that's not even a big set. But now you're getting more, such as, like, more from LEGO Harry Potter. You get the Hogwarts Express, which is a, it comes with the station, platform nine and three quarters. Harry, Ron, Hermione, Dementor, Lupin, and the Trolley Woman. That'll cost $80 for the Hogwarts Express set. Also, we have the Whomping Willow set, which comes with Carr, the Whomping Willow, Castle, and the minifigures are Filch, uh, Seamus, Ron, Harry Potter, Hermione, and Snape, which will cost $69.99. Also, the Quidditch set, which will cost $39.99, comes with Snape, Hermione, Harry, three Quidditch players, uh, two Slytherin players, and two Gryffindor, including Harry. Um, it looks like the Quidditch... Uh, the Quidditch Arena uh, from the movie, which is a very big improvement. And the Great Hall set, which is, costs uh, $100, $100, which is a good price, comes with Castle, Tower, Great Hall, 10 minifigs, such as Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Ron, Harry, Hermione, kind of a sorry-looking basilisk, <laughs> not like the one I got over there, <laughs> Malfoy, Hagrid, Ginny, and Professor Quirrell. Though they were scheduled to come out in August, LEGO has moved up that distribution date all the way up to July. So they'll be coming out at the start of July. And then also the Fantastic Beast sets will be coming out, which is pretty interesting because it has the Crimes of Grindelwald set. It's a 1999 price tag. It comes with Thrust Raw and Carriage. It's a smaller set. It has too many figs, such as Grindelwald and Seraphine Pequiri. And also the better set, uh, bigger set is Newt's suitcase. It comes with uh, it's like a set that is shaped as a suitcase, but you can open the suitcase up, and you get the and the figures that come with that is a Niffler, uh, Akahami, Thunderbird, Rumpets, and the many figures that come with that are Newt, Tina Goldstein, Jacob Kowalski, and uh, Queenie Goldstein. So it kind of opens up. It's like it's. It looks like a suitcase, but you can open it up and it's like set how he like had his own like little laboratory and, and stuff like in the movie. So that's a pretty impressive set, such as like it transforms. It's a transformative set. But also, you know, so that's what's coming out in Lego. I'm pretty impressed with the Harry Potter sets. Lego always does a great job with like their properties, such as um, Star Wars or Harry Potter. But hey, you can't fault them. Lego knows what they're doing. Plus, moving up that distribution date for the Harry Potter sets to from August to July. They always make a quality product. And, you know, like, I, I collect Harry Potter, but, like, the sets I have, I'm pretty happy with. They're pretty detailed, and it's not like I need, like... I'm just going to get the Quidditch one and, like, the Whomping Willow set just to go with my regular collection. And also coming out of uh, NECA, uh, six or seven-inch Teenage 
uh, Mutant Ninja Turtles from the 90 movies figs are coming out from NECA. So if you're a fan of those movies, they are making like six or seven inch figures of those. With uh, NECA though, the, it's interesting how how these kind of things work. You uh, Playmates Toys owns the exclusive license for TMNT. So right. the only way NECA can do it is they either have to make the really really tall like 16 inch turtles which people love uh -huh. or they have to do it in ex in box sets at shows right uh that's the only way they can do it it's really really weird but they have to send it to like comic retailers and stuff like that yeah it's weird but uh they find a way to make it work i wish i was a fan of tmnt yeah i don't really care about tmnt it looks cool obviously huge franchise i believe Kevin Eastman was one of the uh, the main dudes to uh, invent TMNT, but definitely those figures look great. Yeah, and just wrapping up our the last of our updates here, uh, SH Figure Arts is also coming up with an old-time cap from the first movie when he's performing as a mascot outfit with the old shield and gun. A little different, you know, than what we're used to. And Nick Fury, Star-Lord, Groot, Rocket from the first movie. And Hall of Armor figs for Iron Man, such as Mark I, Mark XX, this is a Python armor. They're all from Iron Man 3. Uh, Mark 21, the Midas armor. Uh, 22, Mark 22, Hot Rod armor. And Mark 33, the Silver Centurion armor. So it's going to be like a Hall of Armor from Iron Man 3 from SH Figure Art. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's the updates for today for, you know, toys that are coming out. And we're going to move to our topic today. Our topic we're going to talk about today in the toy industry is toy hunting tactics and favorite childhood toys. It could be anything. Also, you know, like and subscribe to our YouTube page and um, our Facebook page. And also feel free to interact and contact us through in the comments about what your favorite childhood toys were and how the show is and, you know, your toy hunting tactics as well. So did you have any favorite toys as a kid that you remember? None in particular, but I have favorite lines. I love Batman the Animated Series, uh -huh. Gargoyles, Street Sharks. Those are some of my favorite lines. Uh, and still as a kid, I still obviously love all three of those shows. Um, I remember having a Spider-Man McDonald's toys. Yeah. Uh, I love Beanie Babies. Um, yeah, I did. I did too. Those were all just some of my my absolute favorites. I was more of a person that would collect the fast food toys more because they were cheaper, so it was easy to get my parents to buy those toys than it was to get them get the toys in like. A toy store so it was hard to get my parents to like buy me a toy at the toy store such as or the uh, would to get a happy meal and get a toy out of that um plus the mystery of it was pretty good but a couple of toys that i liked as a kid were the burger king toy story woody puppet with the you put his fingers in his back pockets and he'd walk i i, I really liked that as a kid um bionicle star wars legos lord of the rings figures from toy biz Harry Potter figures, Spider-Man animated series toys, Harry Potter Legos, which I still have, Pokemon cards, you know, Pokemon was so big, uh, also Pokemon figures as well, and I also had uh, this one certain one I liked as a kid I got for my birthday, it was the Matchbox Jurassic World Gas Depot set, it was like a Matchbox set with like the like the cars, but it had like Raptors and stuff with it, so it was from the second movie, like Lost World of Jurassic Park. And it had, like, a garage and stuff. And also the vehicle uh, playset with the dino. And, you know, it was only just the vehicle playsets, but the Jurassic Park dinosaur figures I also liked as well. But mostly it was, like, most of my toys I played with were, were those, but through special occasions I would get. But also, like, fast food toys like the Chicken Run, Flying Barn. I get I collect all those. SpongeBob and some Pixar figures from, like, McDonald's and stuff. Because those were really good you know, figures, but toys in general, they were, like, well-made well, like well -made and good size. Like, the fast food toys were, like, one of my favorites. So, those were a couple of my favorites. I mean, yeah, it's kind of hard to remember, like, way going back and stuff, because you'd have so many, like, fads and stuff. And we're going to save that for another episode, certain fads and stuff. Like, I remember Crazy Bones and Beanie Babies and Pokemon cards and stuff like that. But, I mean, our fads are... that We're going to save that for another episode. But, you know, it's, those, those toys have a special place in my heart. Now, are there certain lines you'd like to see done? Like, certain toy lines? Like, that you have, like, certain, I mean, not toy lines, but, like, 
certain lines of properties or something that you haven't seen done that you'd like to see done? I'd love to see in a six inch scale. Um, I, they've done Powerpuff Girls and they've done Dexter's Lab, but I'd love to see them just do Cartoon Network type lines. That's what I put down that too. Like I'd love to see like Johnny Bravo and all that stuff. Um, they've done Hanna Barbera here and there, but I'd love to see that line expanded further. Yeah. I'd love to see an up. I know I know Mattel owns the right now, but I'd love to see an update in the Gargoyles Pops because uh, that was the greatest thing Disney has ever done. Yeah. Um, they're coming out with Funko Pops of that, which I'm so excited for. But I'd love to see that. I'd love to see an update on Street Sharks. I love that show. Those are the main ones, though. Right. I mean, I just wish they could make, like, a decent line of DC figures. <laughs> just, come on. Like, it's always, like, Essentials. Or like, okay, Essentials, okay. If you're a fan of Essentials, great for you. But that's not worth my money to me. They as a suck. Company. They do. I mean, come on. It's like, they don't come with accessories. Why am I paying $25 or $20 for a figure that comes with zero accessories? It's, like, pretty bare bones. I mean, yeah, the figure is great, but, like, what are my figures going to do with no accessory? They, I just think it's really, really lazy. I guess they have a new CFO, which, for those who don't know, is a chief financial officer. And I guess he's very, very into cutting costs, which I understand about right. business. But it's like, I love Mezco. They're my favorite toy company right now, but I don't always want to pay $80 for a DC figure. Right. So that's what, but, and then you go to Mattel, and it's like, some of Mattel's figures are good, some of Mattel's figures suck. Then you go to DC Collectibles, and it's like, you could be great, but some of your, like, the Icons line, for the most part, was really good, and you just, you screwed yourself up with that by not continuing that line, by canceling it and doing this uh, this stupid DC Centrals, which were going to come with cool bases right. and some accessories, and then you just scrap that to save on product costs, and it's just very, very disappointing. Yeah, I mean, I just like to see a decent... I, I, hope, I just hope Hasbro buys out Mattel and they could just do this whole thing all over again. I mean, the, the best DC figures to me are either the yeah, Mezco, whatever they're doing, and also, like, the DC Universe line. Those were still... To me, those are still the best DC figures. I enjoyed a lot of the DC Universe line from Mattel, but the thing with Mattel is they didn't continue to expand like right, yeah. no ankle pivot back in the day was right. fine but as soon as hasbro and the import company started doing ankle pivot yeah you should do ankle pivot as soon as they started doing different body molds you should do body molds like right. that i love the uh the import dc figures too but they mostly focus on movie right. figures through the import companies yeah and I'm like i hope i see harry more harry potter figs a lilo and stitch figures would be cool from various disney movies and stuff like that or like lilo and stitch figures from the tv show because you can make, it's like Pokemon. It's like Disney's Pokemon to me. So it's like they can make a bunch of figures for that or cards or something like that. And that, I, I think Disney sits on more gold than they, they really realize some, sometimes. Like, I remember the TV show Lilo and Stitch, and they had, it was like Pokemon because each of Stitch's like experiments were kind of like had powers and stuff like that. And you could make that off of something. Like, you know, you could make it off like figures or something like that. It'd be cool to collect them all. And they did partially for some of those, but um, they didn't do them all. But... You know, more D- Disney animation figures, Cartoon Network figures were mine as well. Oh. Um, Justice League animated, but we'll see if DC Collectibles shows up for uh, San Diego Comic Con. So we'll see. Um, hopefully, I mean, I'm I'm hoping the best for them, but this is kind of like the last straw. If you guys, if you guys don't have anything to show for this big show, I mean, you're kind of out of the you're getting out of the public's eye right now. And, and hopefully, Superman animated series figures and you know, like I said, just DC figures and DC animated is what I'm. I'm hoping to see out of it, but we'll get into that and more, but let's go into toy hunting tactics, and we went through some of the, I mean, like, I I just want to, like, how do you toy hunt? Is there certain tactics you do when you go into a store? I know here in Ohio, we have uh, Neotech or Northeast Ohio Toys and Collectibles Club. Mm -hmm. Uh, I follow that. I'll see people post updates. Um, When I go to any store, I always go to which areas I like the most, like, whether it's Marvel Legends or whatnot, and I always look there, mm-hmm. and then I'll look all the way on the top, I'll look all the way on the bottom, behind different packages, because some people hide them, Yeah. and that's those are the main things I do, I love eBay, I do a lot of eBay, and I love local comic book shop, um, and that's, that's mostly it. I kind of, I don't hide figures, I used to, because <laughs> I was selfish, <laughs> but, like, I feel like if you don't have the money to buy it, you shouldn't hide it, I haven't done this myself. I mean, I used to hide figures, but I wouldn't hide them in, like, like so when nobody could find them. But, like, if I was to hide a figure, I'd just put it in the back. But I wouldn't move it to a different aisle or anything like that. You see people hide the shelves, like Toys R Us. Like, you could lift the shelves. The Toys R Us is only open for seven more days, apparently. But, like, or any store. You could, like, lift the, sto- like, the shelf up, and there's, like, this undercarriage 
like this like storage area it almost looks like and people will hide figures there i saw uh, youtube videos where people like hid like two packs and stuff under the shelves like because a lot of people don't know how to lift lift it up or like if you're with me at like walmart or something like that i'll check above like you'll like open the flap like where it's like all the like decorative cardboard and stuff like that is like i open the up flap and you'll sometimes find figures there but i'm not so much of a a person that'll hide figures i, I used to be because i don't have the money but like if you don't have the money to spend for that action figure at that particular time then it's open season and fair game for everybody else that's how i see it but i usually speed walk <laughs> through the beeline all the way to the toy department which is always in the back in every store um but, you know, you speed walk, and then you kind of look, and you, you, you go down the, I go down the Marvel Legends line, or aisle, and then I go through the Star Wars aisle. And I, I just take a look at those. And if anything, like, I look at paint apps and stuff, and this is either saying paint discrepancy. It has the best paint app. That's kind of, like, something I, I'll look at. You know, I'll, I'll look at paint apps, and then I'll just, like, make a decision. Price is another thing. I'll just take a look at price if it's on sale and stuff like that, or I'll price match. You're pretty thorough when you go in the toy department, right? In and out, for the most part. Because right. um, most of the time, especially, like, at a Walmart, what you see is what you get. Yeah. Um, I The only time I've ever hidden a figure was actually at Medina Walmart here in Ohio. Yeah. I hid a Bosque, and it's the only Bosque I've ever seen in a while. And it's, it's a, aesthetically, from a sculpting standpoint, Bosque is a great figure, but... Uh, like so many figures, unfortunately, lack a day school in the articulation department. Did you, now after you hit it, did you go back and buy it? I went back like two to three weeks, which goes to show you that Walmart is Walmart. Yeah, but you did get, you did buy it. I did buy it. After you hit it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not too bad. I mean, like, yeah, I think we're all guilty of it at some point. You know, you just kind of like, you don't know if you're going to find it again. That's the tough part. You have to make that tough call. I'm like, well, I'm going to save money. I was like, I don't want to buy this figure. Oh, I shouldn't be buying this figure now. I was like, well, but I'm not going to find it again. Like, I found, like, Grand Moff Tarkin from the Black Series. I'm like, that, that, that's a no-brainer. i got to buy him now. So, But now, you also see things, I imagine, because I've seen things like this, where a person will take a figure out of the packaging. I saw this one time in a Walmart. They took, like, a Marvel Legends Craven from, like, a year or two ago. And switched them out for the older Toy Biz Craven. So people do figure switch for like older figures, or they do take. I saw at the Walmart next. People are scumbags. Yeah, they are. Unfortunately. Scumbags. Yeah, they are. Or they'll take the builder figure piece out, or replace the builder figure piece, or just take the builder figure piece, and that's it. And what people fail to realize is when you do that stuff, all you do is you increase the prices for everyone else because it's theft. Yeah, yeah, you're a scumbag if you do that. I've never done it. But neither have I. But there's certain like there's a code for toy collectors to not do that stuff. You would agree, and not to hide stuff like that. Hundred percent, yeah. Right. It, it's just unethical to do that. Right. You got to be fair and stuff like that. You know, you just don't do it. I mean, it's just not good. It's it's like a game, and like that's kind of like cheating in the game of toy collecting. I mean, if you finders keepers, that's how it works for like all toy collecting. But yeah, you just don't, and it's not right, and you don't hide figures, you don't switch them out, you don't steal build a figure pieces, and you don't steal figures or switch them out. And I hate it when people switch them out, because that's that's just not, that's not cool. I mean, come on. Um, also, I want to talk a little bit about, you're seeing a lot of price gouging online, from, you know, just for certain figures. Scalpers <laughs> yeah. suck. Scalpers. Okay, so, uh, like, what are your, I mean, obviously there's a lot of price gouging going on with action figures, but also, like, a lot of other toys. That's not cool. I mean, like, you shouldn't be price gouging, like, oh, here's Marvel Legends. And I'm seeing, like, Marvel Legends of Zero for 50, 60 bucks. I'm not paying 50, 60 bucks, I don't care what it is, for a, an action figure. Like, I, under, I understand people, you know, as a business manager, I understand people, you know, business one-on-one is you gotta make a profit. Right. But at the same time, it's like, that, like, if you go in and you buy up, like, an entire in like let's say you go to Walmart and there's like eight Thanoses and you buy all eight. Yeah. This is not cool. That isn't cool. I mean, like if you're just buying a figure, buy the figure. But if you're gonna resell it, I, what's the most you pay for an action figure? It depends on the brand. Uh, for a Marvel Legends, like the most I would be willing to pay for a rare one for a Mysterio, uh -huh. probably twenty five to thirty. Okay, I. I'm right there with you. I I'd pay I don't. I would not pay fifty. Like yeah. I, I even saw a shop in the area, which I like this shop, and obviously I'm not going to give any names. Right. But I saw they had a Mysterio, and it was just it was way way overpriced, and I'm just thinking like, come on, like why? Yeah, and I just feel like 
for stuff like that, it isn't worth the price. And also, you know, you got to be realistic. I mean, if if you want to make money and resell figures, that that's different. But you got to do it on a fair fair uh, dime, you know. But how often do you usually toy hunt? Well, it depends. Maybe once a week, once every two weeks. It just depends on when I feel it. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm around that too. And also customization. What do you think of the art? Of customization. I think it's really cool. There's, uh, like, I've seen people make custom Gargoyles figures, custom Marvel Legends of, like, the Serpent Society before we were getting those figures. Right. A lot of people do really cool stuff. Uh, Glenn Webb, RIP, when he was still alive, he was doing some really cool things. Anthony's Customs, who is actually from Ohio, I believe, uh, he's doing some cool things. So I give him a lot of props. Okay. It's, it's very, very tough. Yeah, I always like customization... And I think it's a good way for people to express what kind of figures they want through art and um, figure. It doesn't have to be just figures, but through Lego and all that stuff. You see, like, people just build their own sets and, like, they just like, hey, well, if the company ain't going to make it. And there's, like, more, always more ideas than, like, things that could ever be released. So, I mean, I always, I saw customization figures at Kokomo Toys, and they were looked spot on great. And I've seen, like, some customizers, they're, they're, they're good enough and artistic enough to have a job in, like, a company like Hasbro or Mattel or whatever. And some even do better than some companies of, like, how product is actually out. So some customs are even better than the actual product. Um, some paint details are a lot better. People can experiment and all that stuff. So kudos to those people who are the artists out there for customization. I think that's a really uh, great hobby, and, you know, it's a great art form. And I saw, like... Uh, a YouTube channel, yeah, a YouTube channel about that, and one guy, like, made, like, a three-inch, um, scale for, uh, Stiltman, because no one made a Stiltman figure, ever, really, and he made a really good Stiltman figure for, like, a three-inch, and he was, like, specialized in, like, custom three-inch figures, and I saw really good ones at Kokomo, so it was, like, an art form, and people express themselves, and, heck, you could even, like, go and sell them yourself if you want, and, you know, you see that with Mezco a lot with now. With Mezco, with head sculpts and stuff like that, that page I share with you. Oh, yeah, people have done uh, Hugh Jackman head sculpts. And even I saw, like, a custom Mezco Moon Knight, which was amazing. It's like, whew, that's, yeah, that's really, really cool. It's something special. Yeah, I mean, that's you got to give it to the customizer out there. And, you know, it's in our form, and I appreciate it. I mean, I, I wish we saw more of it. I wish people at Comic-Cons and stuff would do more customizations and, like, maybe sell their custom figures and stuff. So, I mean, you know, I wish it was more celebrated and, like, more upfront in the collecting market. But, you know, like, I get it. It takes time and stuff, and you got to make a buck. And it's not so easy and stuff like that. But I think we're, we've pretty much hammered it out there with the, uh, the topic, such as, like, our childhood toys and toy hunting tactics. To going, like, well, I have the different tactics going through different stores and Comic-Cons and stuff. Like, with Comic-Cons, I do a primary search where I just walk the floor see what's available and then I could do a secondary search where I do more digging and stuff like that I obviously I do that at comic cons and stuff actually I'm going to a comic con this weekend at the Lake Effect comic con which is always a great great show but I'm, I'm mostly into comics when it comes that's like a really good comic book show so I'll probably do them buy more comics if there's like a toy that I can't live without there I go after the toys there uh, hopefully there'll be like a really rare set of figures or play set or something that I could find but I usually do a lot of digging with the comics. But, yeah, I mean, Comic-Cons is hard to buy figures and toys because, like, it, it always seems like the price is jacked up for a lot of dealers and stuff like that. But, yeah, I think that pretty much does it for our uh, third episode. Um, thank you for wa uh, listening or watching. <laughs> Please like and subscribe to our page. Follow us yeah, on YouTube, Facebook, and SoundCloud. That's Talking Toys. Please give us a like and subscribe and comment. So this is uh, Brock Lauer signing off. This is Kyle Walter signing off. And just... Have fun. <laughs> I always talk toys, but play fair in the game.